Hi everybody, my name is Rick and this is Mad Maths. Today I'm going to be talking about mathematics at university level and comparing it to maths at A level and even GCSE. And then at the end, I'm not just going to give a tip because in my opinion tips go in one ear and out the other. I'm going to give a structured path that you can follow if you're in year 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 in order for you to become a successful mathematician at university level. Very briefly, let me say, if you are interested in university level mathematics, don't hesitate to follow this channel where you can get a real taster of what problems are like at university. Okay, let's jump into the video. So, I want this video to be slightly shorter than it could be. Okay, I'm not going to talk in too much depth because I feel like a lot of these things you've probably heard before, right? And I also want this video to be slightly controversial. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, I studied seven mathematics modules this year and I would say six of them are you know, nothing to worry about too much okay so what do I mean by that they're very similar to A level okay you'll do calculus you'll do linear algebra you'll do topics that you're fairly familiar with that you've seen before and yes of course it is harder right there's lots you know a huge 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 amount of content much more than at A level and yeah it's going to be more difficult but I'm I'm sure you would expect that from jumping from A level to degree level. And then I suppose the big thing that needs to be mentioned is that there's much more focus on proofs. Okay, so at A level you might be given something, let's say you're given the Wilder's theorem or you're given the binomial theorem, but you're not explicitly given the proof and you're not expected to remember that proof, even if you was given it. Okay, but at university level, when we prove you know, a theorem, we always get the proof, you know, whether we like it or not, that's university level, that's what it's about, it's about being rigorous and not just assuming things, okay, and um, in exams you may very well be expected to remember these proofs, okay, so that's one big difference between mathematics at university level and at A level, but again, in general, six of my seven modules, you know, we're not, we're not too much of a pain, Okay, they were not a huge surprise. Okay, but why do I keep saying six and not... Why do I keep saying six? I can't remember if it's six or seven. Why do I keep saying six out of seven and not seven out of seven? Well, there's a but. And it's a big but, right? And if you've done, you've already done your first year of university, you probably know which module I'm referring to. It's something called real analysis. Okay, and you know, if, if you haven't done first year of university, you might be thinking, what the hell is real analysis? Well, real analysis is basically building up mathematics from the ground up. Okay, it's assuming nothing but a few very simple axioms. For example, one of the axioms is, say you have a set of numbers, and I say one, two, three, or no, you know, but it doesn't really matter what the set is, it's just a set of numbers. Then that set definitely contains a smallest number and also the biggest number. Okay, so you have a few axioms, really simple statements like that, which you assume to be true, but then from that you have to build all of mathematics, right? Basically, you have to build infinite series, calculus, all these, all these things, right? But you have to not assume them to be true in the first place. Okay, so it's a really, really, really different module to what you've done at A-level and to what you've done at GCC. Real analysis demands rigor. Okay, so when you're at A-level and you have to prove something, or you have to show that something's true, you can kind of fudge it, right? You can show 80% of what was required and that's good enough, okay? But in this module, real analysis, you really have to be incredibly careful with your arguments, okay? If one thing doesn't follow from the other, then, you know, your whole proof might be complete BS, right? So, it's a real shock coming from A-level to start real analysis. The questions in real analysis might take you know, an hour, two hours, you'll get a, pr a problem sheet, right? And you might be stuck there thinking, oh my word, I've been trying this question for you know, hours now. And at A-level, that, you know, that would be a terrible sign. Okay, A-level, you expect to spend, what, like 12 minutes on a, on a big question. In real analysis, when you're practicing, it could be an hour, two hours, okay? So that's the, the huge difference. Okay, that's the big difference between A level and degree level in my opinion. It's this one module. Okay, the other modules, yes, they have their differences, 
but you've probably seen that on other videos. You've probably heard your teachers talk about that. You know, there's more focus on proof, etc. Blah blah blah. But you know, don't worry about those modules. But the last module, real analysis, do worry about. Okay, have a little bit of stress. Okay, because it is very different, and you want to be prepared for that. Um, but don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful module. Okay. Uh, I mean, considering the, qu the questions as uh, basic, right? So, for example, you might have e to the x, and it might prove that the question might be prove that e to the x is smooth. Okay, well, that seems like such a boring question. All right, of course, you know that e to the x is smooth, right? But the process about going about proving that, okay, beyond any doubt, is actually quite beautiful, and it was probably one of my favourite modules of the year. But anyway, that's enough talking about the module itself and the differences. Now I want to briefly talk about how you can prepare yourself for this beast of a module and for university mathematics in general. What is my advice? What is the structured path that I'm suggesting that you follow? Okay, well, in order to give a solution, we need to properly articulate the problem in the first place. Okay, so for me, the likely problem that you're going to have at university is that you're not well versed in spending a lot of time on difficult problems. Right, so the solution, well the solution is you need to spend a lot of time working on difficult problems. Right, but that's easier said than done. Right? But you know, it's not actually too hard. There is a clear solution. For me, that's university entrance exams. So I'm talking about the TMUA, the TMUA, the MAT and STEP, the Cambridge STEP exams. If you're in year 10, 11, 12, maybe, focus on TMUA, TMUA, uh, step one, and Matt. Commit to doing a question every single day. Okay, and sign yourself up, yourself up for all of those exams. Sign yourself up for the, T, the TMUA, the Matt, and sign yourself up for both step two and three. Okay, and if you're applying for Oxford or Cambridge, well then you have extra motivation to revise those exams, you know, even harder, right? But I encourage you, even if you've already been rejected, like me, for example, I got rejected from Cambridge, but I still did step two and three, okay? And I'm incredibly glad I did so, okay? Because when you sign up for an exam, you have a date in mind, okay? And it's a clear goal, and you're more motivated to actually work towards that goal, right? And these entrance exams are perfect. They develop the skills that you're gonna need at university. The problems on the, on the step exams and the math exams are so much harder and, dev and demand so much more problem solving skills than you'll see at A-level and of course at GCC. Okay, so that's my advice. Sign yourself up for step two and three. And of course, Matt and the other ones, but I have a special place in my heart for step two and three. Commit to doing a question every single day. The questions will take you about an hour. They're really difficult, but there's lots of help online. And, you know, crack down, do difficult problems, and then eventually when you get to university level, you know, there's gonna be new content, but the skills required and the ability to, you know, be uncomfortable for an hour will already be there, instilled in you, which you will have developed through these entrance exams. So that's my piece of advice, the structured path that you can follow, and yeah, any more questions or any suggestions for a video I can do next time, please let me know. As always, this has been Mad Maths, see you guys next time.